hello and welcome to the final boop 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 sad face vlog in the six Tudor Queens reading vlog. Today I begin reading on the 1st of November Catherine Parr, The Sixth Wife, the sixth book in the Six Tudor Queens book by t Trilogy. Trilogy? Six, what do you call six books? What do you call a set of six books? Series um, by Alison Weir. I am excited to read this. Catherine Parr is one of my favourite queens in Six the Musical, uh, along with Catherine of Aragon. I'm actually dressed as Catherine of Aragon today, but I've mixed it up for Six because I always wear my Six t-shirt in um, in the first uh, video of these. But today I've also got these trousers on which have got a little gold stripe down the side. That counts as Catherine of Aragon, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, so normally, I mean, uh, every other time of when I've done these videos, I start these videos whilst doing my hair and makeup. Now, it's later on in the day in November. It is pitch black now, it's November. So, when I'm doing my makeup in the morning, it's dark in the bedroom, and you can't really see when I'm filming. <laughs> and now I've got home from work, and it's dark. I'm not complaining, like, this is my time. <laughs> like, November and December are my times. Um, so yeah, so I thought I would start here, as I always do, with talking about what I already know about Catherine Parr, and what I'm coming to expect in this book. So, what I already know about Catherine Parr, she's the last wife of Henry VIII, she survives him, um, and I'm quite excited to hear about someone's life past uh, past Henry VIII. So that's what I think I enjoyed most about the Catherine of Aragon book and the Anna of Cleffer books. Um, the bits where Henry sort of fucked off and they actually have a life for themselves. I know Catherine of Aragon's life for herself was very much pining after Henry, but um, that's what I'm excited about in this book. Now, um, Catherine Parr was already married, I think. I think she was married. Maybe she wasn't married. She was in a relationship with somebody called Thomas. This is what I remember from the musical. And she had to sort of like say goodbye to him because Henry had decided that he wanted to marry her. Um, in the musical, she wears um, blue. Blue is not a colour I own much of. I have literally one blue dress that I'm going, I'm planning on wearing tomorrow. Um, and um, when I saw it, she was played by somebody called... Eleanor, I think it's Eleanor Jassy. Um, I will insert a picture of who I've seen. Well, I've actually seen two um, actors play um, Catherine Parr because the first time I saw um, Catherine Parr uh, in Sixth Musical, she was played by Harriet Watson, I think her name is, um, and she is the, uh, the swing. So they have so they have like alternates for um, the parts in Sixth Musical if somebody's got a night off or something like that. And I saw her and she was amazing. Um, and that's the first time I ever saw it. And I remember thinking like, I loved her because she was like curvier like me and still like absolutely smash it. She's the dance captain of the team. So she's absolutely smashing the dance routines. And like, I loved her. And then I went on and when I've seen it twice since the actual part is played by, I'm sure it's Helena Jesse. I will pictures here, as I said. Um, and yeah, the hair, I'm gonna sort of do it up maybe tomorrow. Um, and I'll be wearing blue. So sort of what I know about Catherine Parr and what I know about Catherine Parr in Six the Musical. I'm going to read, the for, as, I, as always, I like at the beginning of these books they have um, the, the family trees and the Parr's family tree is very sort of sparse. A lot of these family trees when I've been reading these is that they're related. <laughs> Normally there's some sort of relation um, to Henry VIII but here it doesn't look as though there is any relations. Um, Catherine Parr's parents were Sir Thomas Parr and Maud Green um, and Sir Thomas Parr's brothers were Sir William Parr and Anne Parr. Um, so yeah not any of these names am I re recognising here. But yeah so I'm looking forward to reading it and it starts in 1517 to 1520 so I assume this is going to be her when because I think she marries him like when she's a little bit older as well like he's been marrying all these young things hasn't he and um, I think she marries him when he, he, she's a little bit older so I'm hoping we're gonna get a little bit of life before Henry then the life with Henry and then a lot of life after Henry I also think she had quite the life after Henry because she got I, I remember from the song as well from the song in um, Sixth Musical she got a woman to paint a picture she wrote she, she wrote books and um, yeah I think she's I'm, I'm really excited about that side of things so I am going to finish editing my video and then I'm going to sit here and read the first chapter, part one. Part one says, a lively, pleasing appearance. And the first chapter, which is 13 pages. And then I'll let you know how things are going. Sad, but excited. 
to be reading it, but sadly it'll be over. There's David in the background. I've got David's top on now. What top is this, David? For the Saints. Saints. It's actually very cut. It's very unusual. It's like, um, it's almost fleecy inside, isn't it? It's nice, isn't it? It's very warm, it's but it is black and gold, so it matches my outfit. Um, so I've just read the first chapter of Catherine Parr, The Sixth Wife. Um, I'm enjoying it already. Like I said, it's literally 13 pages. Um, Catherine was around five, and five when the... Uh, sweating sickness plague um came and killed her father um and her mother then decides to devote her life to her children um catherine has an older sister and a brother and um she, uh, her mother decides to educate um her catherine and her sister anne as uh, william the son is being um uh, educated so love that for them already um she has gone to live with her cousins and the, i did recognize the name maud which is catherine's mum's name because she was serving um catherine of aragon my two favorite queens so she plans to go back um to serve catherine of aragon um because she knows that she's going to have to live a uh, so, sorry she says there's nothing for it i must live modestly Will you return to the Queen's service, Father Cuthbert asked. And she does decide to go back to the Queen's service. So Anne is now, uh, Anne, no. Uh, Catherine is now back with um, uh, with the cousins and she's been educated and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm enjoying it very, very much. Um, only one, one chapter in, but enjoying it so much. Here's what she looks like here. And yeah, we'll have to see how we get on. David. Lauren. I've got to read, because it's the 1st of November, the passages from my, the passage, from sorry, Nige. from Nige. Would you like me to put some twinkly music on and you listen? Um, I cut, I'm about to, I'm just oh, making okay. the alarm to go off. Do you so. mind if I read it by myself then? I know sometimes you like to dip in, don't you, when I'm like reading it? dip in. I'll explain what this is, so, hold on. Just, <laughs> so, um... This amazing book, uh, The Christmas Chronicles by Nigel Slater, is a collection of Christmas writings and recipes and things that go over the winter period. And they start on the 1st of November. I've also got the introduction to read, which normally I've read by now. Um, but I'm glad I've left it today because I'm feeling very, very cosy. So it starts on the 1st of November with a toast to the winter solstice. And then you sort of like read it as you go through the month. So the next time I'll be reading it is the 4th of November. And um, yeah, I've been doing this for the past few years. Sometimes I listen to the audiobook, sometimes I read it. It's also got gorgeous food photography in it. If you are not new to this channel, you will have definitely seen me talk about this amazing book and how much I love it. Uh, it's one of my favourite books of all time. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be reading this again. And like I said, I sometimes read it aloud and David listens in. But I always put on a little twinkly music playlist. So that's what I'm going to do now. And then I'll check in again once I've read a little bit more of Six Tudor Queens for you. Catherine Pye. Bye. Catherine Pye. Catherine Parr. Oh, beautiful out there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Morning. I haven't read any more in my book, um, but I am dressed like Catherine Parr today, so I thought I would show you. Um, I mean, it's quite loosely Catherine Parr. It's basically the only blue eye to my own. Here I am in this blue cos dress that I bought secondhand on Depop with my trusty new look boots, snag tights, and then this is from Jodie Clovin. I mean, this isn't particularly Catherine Parr, but the blue is, the blue is, that's what I'm going for. And I've also got blue eyeshadow on. Do, do, do. My eyelashes look quite good, don't they? So yeah, as I said, I haven't read any more of the book, um, but dressed as Catherine Parr today. Going to work, going to choir. I'm quite excited, Dave and I have got a really good weekend ahead of us, so. As I said, finish work today, go to choir. I haven't been at choir for two weeks because it's been half term, so excited about that. Then tomorrow, David and I, I've got my makeup trial uh, for the wedding, which I'm so thrilled about. And then David and I are going for our engage anniversary meal. So David and I got engaged on the 3rd of November, two years ago. And then after that, uh, we went out for dinner um, to this place. And then that's where we're going to celebrate again. We went last year and we're going this year. From next year, we'll go on our anniversary. Um, but yeah, it's nice to celebrate the old engage anniversary. And then Friday, we've got our appointment at the registry office um, where we have to register our, like, I think it's like give, give notice or something like that. And then we're going to Centre Parks for the weekend with my mum, no, not with my mum, my mum and dad are going with my sister, um, her husband and my niece. So yeah, we've got a really exciting week. 
I imagine I'll get quite a lot of reading done. I'll take you along for the ride. Um, but yeah, going to work now and see you a bit later on, probably when I get back from choir. And if I've read any more, I'll let you know I'm getting on. But yeah, no more reading book, but Catherine Parr outfit. Bye. Um, just to let you know, we're off on holiday now. So I think what will follow will be a little um, montage of us in Centre Parks. Um, I'm taking the uh, Catherine Parr book away with me. Um, I don't know how much reading I will get done, but hopefully a little bit. Um, I'll be taking that away with me. And then, yeah, so montage coming up. And then I will... Uh, fill you in with how I got on with the book while I was gone. Tiny little dot of a cat. Uh, it was a lovely montage for you, that hopefully was. We had a lovely time. Very wet, but very wonderful. Hope you don't mind, I'm just home from work and I'm so hungry I'm going to have a slice of eat Um So yeah, it's Tuesday now. We got back from, oh my God, we had a right old kerfuffle when we got back from Centre Park. Get, came to get in, the lock had broken. So whatever was in the mechanism was, wasn't catching. So we had to call a locksmith out. It took us six hours to find a locksmith and get them out. £270. And it had just been such an expensive weekend because Thursday we'd been out for a meal for David and I engage anniversary. And I'd had my makeup trial. Friday we were at the registry office having our bands read and that cost £36 a person then we're on holiday then we came home £270 to get in our house so yeah definitely not putting the heating on today um yeah so I just thought I would fill you in while I eat my bit of cheese <laughs> on how I've been getting on with Catherine Parr's story Catherine's on her second husband her first husband was homosexual and he, well, he never had any babies. He preferred to, as it's described in the book, lay with men. He died of a fever. Now she's with someone who was a bit older. He's in with the rebels and sort of like has been forced into the rebels really. Catherine's saying she agrees with Anne Boleyn's sort of religious views and what she wants done with the church. And Catherine's become a stepmother to, what's his bloody name? John, Lord Latimer. She's become a stepmother to his two children. The son didn't like her very much, but they seem to be all right now. And they've had to do, deal with rebels turning up at the castle. They live in a castle. <laughs> um, and refusing to leave until they get to speak to Lord Latimer, etc., etc. Now, Lord Latimer believed he was out of favour with the king 
but it seems as though the king has smiled upon him but now they're not entirely sure what's happened and Anne's been executed and we're about to crack on with that so yeah a little bit of Catherine action tonight my friend Emma's coming round the plan was we were going to put a little bit of Christmas up however the plan was yesterday to go and get some Christmas but we didn't get in till past the time when we could go out again so I've just got home from work flew home from work flew to the library because I had five books that were due back today and were definitely going to be like they've been renewed four times so I couldn't get them again and then picked those up from David because I forgot to take him to work this morning back to the library back home David's just gone down to the storage to get some Christmassy stuff and Emma's coming round well about an hour we're having sausage mash and beans when I got all my shopping yesterday, we got two lots of frozen stuff. That obviously all defrosted because we couldn't put it in the freezer. So we've got some defrosted edamame beans and some defrosted meatless farm sausages. So I need to make sure I, it says for best results, grill from frozen. Alas, they're not frozen anymore, so I'm having that. And that's it, I might have myself a glass of leftover treats from the weekend, diet free, diet free. <laughs> caffeine free diet coke um and yeah i was gonna film a book haul i don't know whether or not i'm going to do that i don't know if i've got enough books that warrant a book haul we'll know this maybe by the time you're watching this i've done that book haul but yeah so no christmas tonight i don't think but we are going to watch i'm a celebrity get me out of here and um i might read a little bit more of Catherine Parr. let me go and consider the book haulness of life that's right, it's Christmas pyjama season. David and I are in matching pyjamas. It has been a long time. See the state of my side table, the all of that shit on there. Um, it's been a long time since I've read any of Six Judy Killings. I am on a, a halt in 1540 because I had to stop in order to read this book, The Herd, for um, my... Uh, book club with my friends but I actually really didn't enjoy this and um, I got as far as like 160 pages maybe even longer than that I was over halfway I think it's 190 pages um but book club has happened today and I explained that I read as much as I could but I couldn't read anymore so I haven't been reading that because I've been reading this but that's done now I'm about to review it and say DNF um but we're back in business with um Catherine Parr now as I said I've been out of not reading anything Catherine Parrish, but I'm going to read a chapter before I go to bed now. It's Sunday night. Um, and then tomorrow, I'm going to wear a blue dress for Catherine. Um, and then I'll fill you in when I get home from work as to how much more Catherine Parr I've read at work and um, how wearing the same blue dress that you've probably seen me in already <laughs> this video went. Um, but yeah, I think I'll take my makeup off and read a little bit more of Catherine Parr's life. I can't remember how far we've got. We've got as far as her husband. Um, oh, the king has just got married to Anna of Clefa, I think. 1540. Lucky I've got, she's taken her glasses off to look at a really small piece of writing. This bit at the back, which really, really helps out. 1540. Yeah, he, he marries Anna of Clefa. So the king has just married Anna of Clefa. Anna of Clefa, can she say Anna of Clefa anymore? And anyway, I've got to get the end of my bottle of uh, this out before I'm... I'm not starting that new bottle until every last drip of this is gone. I will not do it. I will not. Oh, hiya. Been a while, Catherine Parr. I've read lots, but just haven't been vlogging it. I think David's been ill. Work's been busy. Things to do. And in the evenings, I've been doing some stuff for the wedding so yeah it's been um i just haven't been able to catch up with you all but just to let you know she's married to henry now i don't think she was married to henry last time and he is older now and um i don't think we're that far from his death so her uh, second husband died of consumption um the daughter that her second husband had um it, from a previous marriage is now dying of consumption henry's got very very bad legs and he seems to be dying of bad legs. There's been a lot of stuff about heresy and um, the, the king suspecting that she's a heretic. Heretic? Um, and then that not coming to anything. 
one thing I will say is that there's been quite a lot of featuring of um, the King's Fool in this, which sounds to me just like some annoying, well, I guess they're like a jester, like that would be the word that I would associate more with the Fool character, like a jester. But I would just be so annoyed by someone like that just being around me at all times, um, trying to cheer me up or just doing stupid things like falling over and pretending to read a book upside down and everyone seems to find him hilarious and I find him annoying, <laughs> not hilarious. So yeah, that made me think about that. Um, Catherine seems to have formed quite the bond with um, Henry's children from his previous marriages, um, particularly Mary, who is similar to her in age. Um, she seems to have formed a very good bond with her and Edward, um, who she writes to all the time. Edward, Edward's very much kept out of um, any sort of court visits and everything. He's not very well. He's quite, they, they, they refer to him as quite sickly. Um, and she's writing to him. He's being educated by, uh, he's been brought up in a house full of women. And then Henry just decides that he's been around women for too much. He needs to be bought, he needs to be educated by men. So that's what's been happening more recently. Um, and yeah, it's all going all right. I, um, I had a little brief glimpse at the timeline at the back because these books, as you will have, if you'd have seen other ones, they have a collection of the characters in these books, which are many, and then a little timeline. And I didn't quite realize that I thought from my base in what I'd heard in the musical, um, six, I thought Catherine lived for a long time after Henry. Um, and she doesn't. Um, she, Henry dies in 19, uh, 15, 1947, 1547, and she dies in 1548. But she does have a baby with Thomas Seymour, so that's also been going on. So she's very much in love with Thomas Seymour and she really fancies him loads. And he's sort of, they sort of made their peace with the fact, well, she made her peace with the fact that she should marry Henry and that would be the right thing to do. Um, in order like that's what god had sent her to do and stuff like that um and i knew that after henry died because of the musical she got with thomas seymour i didn't realize they had a daughter but it looks as though maybe she dies in childbirth um but yeah it's all been happening it's all been happening so i guess i'll get it. so today is saturday david's gone for his stag do how many stag do's can one man have he's already had a stag do in germany he is currently having a home stag do with a few people who couldn't make it to Germany um, and they're going to some pubs and stuff like that so I'm in by myself all day I've got a cat on my lap which is why I'm not moving very much can you see a bit of the cat? nope, none of the cat can be seen that's that's not just me stroking out although I suppose I could, you wouldn't know would you? you would know because she's a gaudy baby oh yeah there's a bit of fluff um, and yeah so I'm in Speaking of fluff, I'm in by myself all day today. I've got my choir social tonight. Now, I don't, I'm not a big socializer, if I'm honest, particularly in big groups of people. I very much enjoy going to people's houses for dinner or having people here for dinner. Um, uh, maybe going out with a few friends, but like big groups are just not something that I ordinarily do. <laughs> I don't know why I agreed to it. Um, but I have made a few friends at choir, um, which has been lovely. And one of the friends that I've made, I'm picking up on the way. Um, so yeah, I'll see how I get on with it. They said there's going to be games and stuff as well, and I'm not great at games, <laughs> like as in party games and things like that. Um, so we will see how things go, but I'm um, I'm not not looking forward to it. I'm just um, quite awkward and stuff in in big in in big group things. Um, but it's in a village hall. Is that like as far as like things could go in terms of like making me feel comfortable in a social situation with big groups of people? It's not in a pub, so that makes me feel pleased already. It's in a village hall. You take your own drink, so I'm um, like. It doesn't happen often, but I don't know what this group of people are like. Because I don't drink, sometimes people are like, oh, God, why don't you drink? Oh, I couldn't cope without drinking. Oh, but what do you do when you go out? Oh, but I love wine. That sort of thing has happened before. So there's no, I'll just have my own drinks that I've bought with me. Um, and it finishes at 11. So there's a, a good cutoff point. So I know that that's done at 11. Um, and yeah, so th those are sort of things definite finish point in a sort of village hall where there's only the people from the choir stuff are going to be there take my own drink 
yeah let's see how it goes um i don't know what i'm gonna wear yet i might wear i've got a gold skirt i might wear that it's a it's a winter social so i was gonna wear Christmassy stuff but maybe not but i'm gonna have a daytime bath a bit later on as well i've got a few packages coming today i've done some christmas shopping oh minnie are you going i'm just stretching my legs out because they're a bit there we go um yeah i've got some christmas presents arriving so um they're arriving between one and three um so i can't really get in the bath before then which is quite nice that means i'll just be wallowing in me i feel full day in my dressing gown but i have got a video to edit so i'm going to do that in a minute as well i'm just going to text david to check he got to where he's going okay and then um a bit more reading of this i would like to have this done by the end of the weekend who knows if i will i've really dragged this one out as you can it's the 20th of november today no it's not the 19th of november oh my god where is this month going it's my birthday literally soon um yeah normally i've got this done like within the first sort of week but i think where i haven't been doing so much reading in the evening it's it's gone on for a little bit longer but i will continue to read it i will oh hi I've just had such a lovely evening. I've just been recording the um, Christmas episode of the Quick Book Reviews podcast with uh, Philippa. This is the third Christmas I've done it and I always have such a lovely time just chatting Christmas books with Philippa. We always bring five books, Christmas books each and then talk about them and we seemingly never have uh, uh, crossovers so there's always sort of like 10 really exciting Christmas books to talk about and I've just had such a lovely Christmassy time. It's Monday night, the... 21st of November I have 80 maybe less than 80 pages left of Catherine Parr hoping to finish it tonight so that the vlog can go up on Tuesday will that happen who knows David's just making us some gnocchi for dinner Ooh, notification um, and then I'm going to have a bath but I'm going to see if I can just read a couple of double pages before then because I'd really like to have this finished that I can deliver you the vlog because it's gone on a long, long time, this vlog. Um, but yeah, I can't remember how, where I got to last time. Henry's dead. She's married Thomas, who I think is the brother of Jane Seymour. Um, and, uh, well, they've married in secret. They've sort of betrothed themselves to one another. She's still in very close contact with um, Henry's two daughters, less so uh, Edward because Edward is now king. Um, and sort of as a protector over him. I think maybe um, Thomas Seymour hoped to be Edward's protector, but that doesn't seem to be happening. Um, but yeah, it's all kicking off for her. They were, I didn't realize how sort of closely linked these, I, I had no idea as well that Catherine went on to marry Jane Seymour's brother. It's like, it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Marrying people's brothers and all of that sort of thing. But yeah, hopefully I'll get this. Hopefully the next shot will be of me in bed saying, I finished. <laughs> Let's hope. Hello. I said at the end of the last snippet, next time you see me, I'll be laying in bed having finished six Tudor Queens. Well, I did finish six Tudor Queens in bed last night, but I had Minnie laying on me and was just so cosy. And we, we really, we're not having the heating on this winter, or at least we're trying not to have the heating on this winter. It was really, really cold last night. It's not too bad today. Um, and I was just so snugly tucked up and I thought, I can't get Minnie off me, untuck David a little bit when I'm so cosy in bed and the camera was in here. So I did finish it last night, but here I am coming to you with my finish wrap up of um, Catherine Parr. So here we go. The sixth book in the series, very much enjoyed it. I didn't realise how much of a dirty old dog Tom Seymour was. So Tom Seymour, brother, I still think, although I can't quite, I did, never worked it out and couldn't find it back in there. I wonder if it's in it. But yeah, brother of Jane Seymour. Um, towards the end of this book, once Henry has died, um, Tom and Catherine reignite their love story that sort of started. The embers were sort of burning a little bit um, before she married Henry. Um, and um, Catherine becomes the, um, the guardian of Elizabeth and Mary, the two princesses who then go on to be queens. Tom tries to cop off with Elizabeth, or um, in, as, as this book would have you believe, manages to cop off with Elizabeth so that feels really grimo um they have a daughter Mary Seymour named after Princess Mary and um due to complications which sounds like an infection um 
ja uh, Catherine dies after childbirth. So yeah, really sad ending. But I do appreciate how these books all sort of follow the formula of going right up until the moment where the Queen dies. And obviously some of these deaths, the beheadings, in, uh, are quite sort of the, the event so I understand that but I appreciate that the, all of the queens are mirrored in that I've really enjoyed the experience of reading these six books and although these are <coughs> fictionalized versions of what happened um I've definitely picked up some stuff yesterday when we were watching House of Games one of the questions on House of Games was um who ruled for 11 days after um after um Edward died King Edward died and I knew it was Lady Jane Grey because I'd read these. So they, they definitely educated me and made me interested in that period of history. I'll put this down now. I'm interested to find out what happens with Elizabeth, Mary. <clears throat> I'm just interested in those guys. And like I said, I don't think this end of this series is going to end here because I also have these two books. Now, number one book is In the Shadow of Queens, Tales from the Tudor Court, um, and this is two short stories per queen. So these were released as e-shorts um, with the books as they came out on e-reader. Uh, so um, I will go back to this and read all of this, very much looking forward to reading this. Um, we have stories from Arthur relating to um, Catherine of Aragon. Uh, we've got stories called The Tower is Full of Ghosts Today. Um, the King's Painter, that's to do with Anne, I think. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to reading that. May well read that in January. And then I've got the book that came out this year, which was The Last White Rose, um, which came out in May this year. This is about Elizabeth of York, um, born into a war between two families. She dreams of a crown to call her own. Now she must choose her allies wisely. Elizabeth of York father of uh, father um mother of henry the eighth uh married to henry the seventh um so yeah and there's a book about henry the eighth from alison weir coming out in 2022 as well so i imagine i'll read that so i i'm not quite done with the tudors yet um and we'll continue to read it but i hope you've enjoyed this series um there is a whole playlist of these if you're coming to this and thinking what on earth is going on why is lauren reading a book about catherine parr i've read all six of them so there is a playlist i will link that down below um i hope you've enjoyed watching these as much as i've enjoyed doing them and getting dressed up not dressed up today just trying to keep warm now <laughs> and i'll see you all again soon for another booktube video goodbye <laughs>